All right, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mic'd Up, our last and final segment tonight. It's probably the, uh, well, can't say it's necessarily the most important of the stories, but it's uh, certainly up there with all the other ones going on. We have with us our guest, Michael Hitchborn from American Life League. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Uh, there's a really disturbing story that you've been following, uh, actually been helping create <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah, as many people know who follow us, uh, you know, we've teamed up with you guys, you know, quite frequently to get into all the information about the Catholic campaign for human development and the Catholic relief services. And, you know, the big issue being that these United States bishops agencies, you know, are giving money to groups that, uh, you know, are opposed to Catholic teaching. Uh, you know, the, the CRS in its case actually funnels government money to groups that are, uh, work actively uh, against, uh, you know, Catholic Church teaching with regard to, you know, morality and you know, sexual morality and population control and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I'm sure it was a little disturbing to faithful Catholics who understand the kind of behind-the-scenes relationships to find out that Obama, fearless leader Obama, had nominated and it had been accepted by the Vatican that the former head of Catholic Relief Services, Ken Hackett, is now the U.S. ambassador to the Vatican. We've got some video here of that uh, uh, of him presenting his papers to Pope Francis. Uh, your reaction to this, just just on the surface? On the surface, well, I, I think it's interesting that somebody who was a, a donor to the Obama campaign, after Obama had made it absolutely clear that he was going to attack families, that he was going to attack babies, and that he was going to attack the Catholic Church, should then be picked as the next ambassador to the Vatican, uh, it speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. And, you know, when I look at what Ken Hackett has done in his tenure at Catholic Relief Services, um, with all of the funding going to organizations like Population Services International and Care International and Save the Children, all of which are thoroughly committed to spreading abortion and birth control throughout the country, uh, it just says exactly where the administration stands. It says where Ken Hackett stands. And it looks as if he is chosen because he's kind of trusted. And therefore, it will give the appearance that maybe there's some kind of cooperation going on with the United States government. It'll put the Vatican at ease. I, I think it's a disaster. Do you think that there, I mean, first of all, let's let's talk about just some little, uh, uh, you know, inside baseball here. Is it disturbing, because it is to me, is it disturbing to you, and I'm sure it is to others, that here's a man, and we're get, we'll get into why in a moment, we're sort of letting the putting the cart before the horse here, but here's a man who has publicly ridiculed and slammed the efforts of good, solid, faithful Catholic pro-lifers, the people who are standing out in front of these abortion chambers, you know, day after day, weekend after weekend. He slams these effort, the efforts of these people, uh, uh, in saying that they're, you know, to, that them being concerned about Catholic relief services, giving money to pro-abortion groups, oh, they're overstated. And he paints them as a bunch of wackos. And these are supposedly his fellow Catholics. And does this bespeak a kind of a mind of some of the bishops in the U.S. that they would turn around and have him run their agency? He, they're, he's running their agency, and now they're all, of course, or at least some of them are like, yay, yeah, yay, yeah, rah, rah. You know, they, I'm sure the Vatican consulted with somebody back here in the United States before accepting his nomination to be the ambassador from the United States. I mean, this just all seems like so much inside baseball garbage, one hand washing the other, people slapping each other on the back. The guy slammed pro-lifers. Yeah. Well, you know, look, I can't, I can't say exactly what's going on in the mind of the bishops, and, but I can say that I do hope that uh, the bishops are simply relying on the good reputation that Ken Hackett had acquired uh, rather than actually looking into what he has, act has said and done and how his actions have speak spoken louder than words. Um, I really hope that they don't know really what he is all about. Well, let's, because get, let's, spent let's get into that. Let's get into that. Yeah. First of all, uh, uh, when we're talking about what he's all about, uh, I'm, I've got a LifeSite News article open up here on my big screen, and uh, he says he, it's a, a commentary on an article on an interview he gave to National Catholic Reporters uh, uh, John Allen, and they asked him uh, about charges from people like you and Steve Phelan and Dr. Monica Miller, Steve Phelan at Human Life International, Dr. Monica Miller it's here locally to Detroit, a very good friend of ours, uh, about them saying, hey, stop giving this money to these pro-abortion groups, this Catholic money. 
And he said uh, in this article, National Catholic Reporter, I wouldn't put much stock in detractors. You're all a bunch of detractors, us too, who don't have mud under their toes because they haven't been working in the tough places. Okay, I'll let you say what your quote is after that, since since the person quoted is sitting here on our screen. Uh, that uh, ticked you off. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. Because quite honestly, somebody who's pulling in $300,000 a year plus, and I, it's actually closer to 400000 when you tack in all of the extras that go with yeah. uh, the reported income, uh, somebody who's pulling in nearly half a million dollars a year like that is not going to be getting mud underneath his toes. Um, and I think that uh, your friend Monica Miller actually said it very well when when she said that, you know, he talks about getting mud, mud under his toes, but the people that he is detracting are the ones who are getting blood under their fingernails as they're pulling babies from trash cans. And I don't think he's ever done that. Yeah, it's, it's a little disturbing. I mean, there's, you know, again, I mean, what it looks like we have here is another one of these sort of, you know, Catholic establishment types who's, you know, very nice. It can be, you know, polite and shake hands with everybody and all the best of them and laugh and yuck it up about, you know, whatever the latest sports or weather topic is or something. But, but behind that veneer is something entirely different. And you have uncovered a book that he has written. And we're going to spend the rest of this interview talking about the mind of Ken Hackett, not as we interpret it, but as he states it himself. Michael, go for it. Okay, now Ken Hackett, he wrote a book review of Jeffrey Sachs's book. This isn't his book. This is Jeffrey Sachs's book called The End of Poverty. And the book was published in 2005. Ken Hackett wrote a glowing review of this book. He said that it was a positive force for the cause of development and a must read for anyone who is interested in helping the poor. Now, the reason that's significant, he, he wrote a book review. You don't write a book review glow giving glowing praise for a book that you disagree with he never mentions the fact that the book promotes contraceptive use he never mentions the fact that the book talks about reducing fertility rates he doesn't talk about any of that all he talks about he quibbles a little bit with implementation and how maybe one might implement some of the policies that are talked about in the book which i'm going to get into but he never once takes issue with the fact that the book itself is pushing family planning, reproductive services for the specific goal of reducing fertility rates, which is what we used to call, call population control. Right. Now, I, I, I'm just going to give you a few excerpts from the book. Sure. It, it, it really does color what his mindset must have been in giving a positive review of this book because the underlying philosophy that Jeffrey Zacks presents is that babies equal poverty and the only way to reduce fertility rates or one of the only ways to reduce fertility rates or, or reduce uh, poverty is to reduce fertility rates. And here on page 57 from the end of poverty, uh, Jeffrey Sachs says, in, set in settings where the total fertility rate, the number average number of children per woman, is typically at least five and much higher, women spend most of their adult lives rearing children Traditionally, homebound women live lives of backbreaking labor on the farm, endless walking to collect food and water and child rearing because, you know, raising children is terrible and we shouldn't have to do it. The changes in living conditions and economic activities lead to new realities in family structures as well. The age of marriage is typically delayed. Sexual relations are transformed sexual uh and with greater sexual freedom much less directly linked to child rearing hmm fewer generations of family members live under one roof and crucially the desired number of children changes remarkably as families move from rural to urban settings in rural settings large families are almost always the norm in rural settings families choose to have fewer children this is the crux of the demographic transition, one of the most fundamental of all social changes during the era of modern economic growth. And Sachs, this, and Sachs approves of this. He, he's praising yes, this. Yeah. Yes. So In he's fact, the rest of his book. That that's the uh, that that is the foundation that the rest of the book is predicated upon. Which Ken Hackett 
praises, think his thinks is great, supports it, yep. thinks a big thumbs up, big smiley face, loves it, thinks it's awesome. Yes. Absolutely. How how does a man who thinks abortion, contraception, sterilization get to be the head of the bishops overseas and domestic poverty relief program when of his own mind he has revealed that one of the ways that he considers uh, getting rid of poverty that is a legitimate, praiseworthy way is by getting rid of the poor. How does this man get that kind of a position and then get paid anywhere between a third and a half million dollars a year in benefits and total pay? How does this happen? Yeah. Well, that's a really good question. And I think that there are only two answers. Either one, he was really good at hiding what he had been doing for the last 20 years. Which means the people investigating him were very poor at it. Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, or... The people that put him in that position knew exactly what he was about and helped him hide it. And on, and, and oh. on top of all of this, again, you know, we'll roll that video again. On top of this, here he is now, the ambassador to the Holy See for the United States, a man who has this kind of mind and this kind of thinking. Has he come out and said anything to make us think that the book review he wrote back in 2005 he's backpedaled from or disagrees from? No. He comes out and slams pro-life Catholics who are saying, wait a minute, stop giving this money to these groups for this thing. He's continuing 10 years later, 9 years later, to defend the actions of which he was praising 9 years earlier. Absolutely. Um I, I really can't think of any other justification for giving a glowing review of that book. But then when you look back at the organizations that, that Catholic Relief Services under his watch has been receiving money, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for crying out loud, Population Services International, really? That organization alone, it's the Planned Parenthood of the population development or, or the uh, the in the uh, excuse me <laughs> right. the community development or the urban development right. of the international development world mm -hmm. it is the planned parenthood of that set of groups um i think so, i think something michael that's, that that many viewers uh you know might need just a, a real quick you know push pause on the discussion for a moment yeah, the the concern is that all there is this massive global effort on the part of the international community and NGOs inside baseball talk for non-government organizations. But I mean, that just means they're not administered by governments. They're certainly paid for by governments. Uh, right. And they're in league with governments and government policies from governments all over the world that are their their, their policy is reduce the number of human beings, particularly yes. poor people, which falls on, you know, non-white races. Uh, largely, not exclusively, but largely, uh, you know, reduce these numbers, contracept, abort, sterilize these groups out of existence. And this they call anti-poverty program. And, and that's pretty much the drill. That's what goes on here in the United States with the support of hundreds of different denominations, including much support coming in the terms of many, many dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions in some cases, uh, uh, from, the, from the Catholic Bishops Conference. So this is a very disturbing thing. Now, that's the context in which Ken Hackett uh, is raising people's hackles, uh, being named ambassador to the Vatican with supposedly, you've got to presume, the support of at least some of the U.S. bishops. And there's no way the Vatican would have not contacted and consulted uh, somebody at the U.S. bishops to say, hey, Obama's given us this name. Remember, to give everybody a little uh, refresher course, back in 2008 when Obama won, they kept submitting names uh, for the ambassadorship role. Remember this? Saying, hey, will you accept this guy? And Benedict and the, and the, the courtiers at the Vatican were like, nope, 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 no, he's pro-abortion. No, he's pro-gay marriage. No, nope, nope, nope. And they finally settled on um, uh, Diaz, Miguel Diaz, who was teaching in uh, what, University of St. Thomas, I think, in Minneapolis. And uh, so they would have gone through the same process here. Diaz is done. So they'd have been contacting. And so who, who in the United States, in the church in the United States said, oh, Ken Hackett, big thumbs up. Yep. He supports sterilization, contraception and abortion as a means for controlling populations and alleviating poverty. We'll give him a great big baptism and give him a thumbs up. Who in the church is doing this? This is disturbing beyond just the guy. The fact that the guy is essentially making fun of pro-lifers. 
I mean, the fact the man is now the, he is now the ambassador to the Holy See for the United Nations and somebody promoted his cause or supported his cause or both for this appointment here in the church and the leadership in the United States. How did this happen? Well, and something else we need to consider is the fact that as the ambassador, he is not representing the interests of the Catholic Church. He is representing the interests of, of the Obama administration, which has shown itself to be by far the most hostile administration towards the Catholic Church that this country has ever seen. And I, I find that very interesting that he would accept that position knowing how hostile Obama and his cronies are to the Catholic Church. Now, one thing that I think that is very interesting is that just before uh, Ken Hackett presented his credentials to the Vatican so that he would be accepted as the, as the ambassador, Pope Francis said for the third time that the church is not an NGO. Yeah. Yeah. And he made it abundantly clear that the number one priority of the Catholic Church is to bring Christ to people, to bring souls to Christ, to convert people. And he said that, you know, helping the poor and everything else is good, but a church that does not bring Jesus is a dead church. Right. And I find that fascinating because that's been one of the biggest criticisms of Catholic Relief Services for quite some time, is that they are not doing anything to evangelize. In fact, they say that they don't evangelize, and how can they anyway when they're hiring predominantly non-Catholics? So I think that what Pope Francis had said recently is almost an indictment of Ken Hackett himself. Yes, it's, it's you know, the, the, you get this shudder going down your spine, realizing what Ken Hackett has supported, what he's been about for at least a decade, if not, if not mm -hmm. more, standing there handing in his credentials as Obama, uh, as Obama's handpicked man and supported by people back here. I, I mean, this is, you know, this stuff has got to stop. It has got to stop. It's just one scandal after another, after another nonsense. And there's always some nice little polite political, oh, you know, don't so you're getting all upset about everything. This is disgusting that this man uh, is approved by someone in the American hierarchy or some people because he would not be there. All they would have to do is pick up the phone and say, hey, put Pope Francis on for me. You, you want to say no to this guy. Just like happened back in 2008. Was it? They got rid of, I think they went through four or five different names under uh, Pope Benedict, right, before they finally <laughs> settled on Miguel Diaz. Remember, yeah. I, I think Kathleen Kennedy was one of the names, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so somebody back here picks up the phone and goes, oh, no, 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 you can't have that. Or the Vatican already knew about her by reputation. Michael Hitchborn, thank you very much for giving us all this. Quick, the name of the book again that he gave the positive review to. It's The End of Poverty by Jeffrey Sachs. End of Poverty. Folks, look it up. Read that book. Read a little chapter. We'll, we'll have some, uh, uh, some relevant quotes and things here on the page. You can just click on the links there and take a look for yourself. And then realize that Catholic Ken Hackett, who was the bishop's hand-picked man to run their agency, uh, their Catholic Relief Services agency, earning third to a half million dollars a year, uh, is sitting here, now the ambassador to the Vatican on behalf of the Obama administration, and nobody raises an eyebrow. Something is seriously wrong. Michael Hitchborn, thank you very much for being with us. Folks, we're about out of time this week. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Be sure to join us next week for another uh, show. Uh, you know, When do we ever get to talk about the triumph of the church? We, I guess we just have to wait for that to the end of the world. This is Michael Voris. Let's finish up with a prayer to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God bless you all. See you next week. Bye-bye.